They say that a picture is worth a thousand words, and I believe in the case of this picture, that's true. There's a lot going on, there's a story to be told, and there's a lot to be said about this picture. Now, on its own, the conflict between Machine Gun Kelly and Conor McGregor is really not that interesting. Not much happened. But when we look at this picture, at our three main characters, and see three very different responses to the same set of circumstances, there are some things that you can learn from this incident when it comes to self-defense, fighting, or violence generally. Out of the three reactions to this set of circumstances, I actually think that Conor McGregor's is the healthiest. I know what you're thinking. You're like, Mike, you're insane. You're just trying to get us to watch the rest of this video. He was throwing drinks and he tried to hit him. Well, you're only like partially right on some of that. He was not actually trying to hit him. If you look at this picture, you see Conor McGregor throwing that left. The left that can somehow KO UFC fighters, but not knock out old guys from behind at the bar. But he's not really. Connor has a long history of throwing these ineffective pretend strikes when he knows people are there to hold him back. This is a threat display. This is Connor doing Connor things. Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox's reactions are much more interesting to me because while I'm not saying that Connor's reaction was good, and I don't know who the good guy was. People are saying that Connor wanted to take a picture with Megan Fox. Machine Gun Kelly said no and pushed him. It was probably more complicated than that. I don't know who the good guy is, who the bad guy is, who started it. I don't care. I'm talking about the response to violence. Now, I didn't set out to start bashing Machine Gun Kelly, but by the time I got to the end of all the footage that we're going to review, that's what I ended up doing because his response and his reaction and the way he handled this was pathetic. Like, really pathetic. Like, really sad, really insecure, really pitiful. And he takes it out on a reporter later when he's asked because his, his brain literally breaks because he's so incapable of handling the stresses, not only of physical conflict, but apparently simple questions. And it's not uncommon, like as uncommon and weird as Machine Gun Kelly is, which I don't, I don't know a lot about him. I know he's a rich, famous celebrity that dresses weird and uh, has hit or miss music. What he did is not that much different from what you would probably do or someone you know. And I know you think, well, no, if, if someone were like throwing drinks at me and trying to hit me, I would definitely like defend my, my lady and I would definitely like protect myself. Probably not. You probably wouldn't. If you don't have exposure and experience to conflict and stress, you probably wouldn't do any of that. Conor McGregor has plenty of experience and practice dealing with conflict and stress and potential violence. Machine Gun Kelly clearly has none. Megan Fox clearly has none. And you might even tell me that, oh, at one point in their lives they did. And I would believe you because I myself used to be in conflicts all the time. As I age and I no longer have conflicts, I don't fight anymore, I don't, I don't, I'm not a police officer anymore, I don't get into conflicts and I don't deal with stress, I don't react as quickly to them as I would like to. I'm just not as sharp anymore. That's a real thing. That's why training and practice are important. And I'm gonna show the video of the incident. The video is, is not that great because it doesn't show the lead up, but I am gonna break down some of what you see, especially afterwards. I want you to pay attention to the reactions at the end of Machine Gun Kelly and Conor McGregor, and that lends further proof to the idea that Conor McGregor's handling of violence and conflict is healthier. I'm not saying morally superior, right, or even healthy. I'm saying it's healthier than just whatever it is that Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox are doing here. Because what they're doing is essentially nothing, and something is happening. Something is definitely happening, and they're doing nothing. That's bad. I don't, I don't know a simpler way to explain that. Machine Gun Kelly shuts down. If you think of the brain as a computer, your response to violent stimulus is an application that you need to run. He's not running an application. He doesn't make any moves to protect Megan. In fact, he's, he's bailed out by this group of nice young women who are saying, hey, we need to get Megan out of there. She doesn't need to be involved in that because she's likely going to get hurt even inadvertently and they come rescue Megan and there's a nice young lady and a guy that rescue Machine Gun Kelly. But he do, it's like he doesn't register that there's a very dangerous person in front of him. And not just, uh, just another adult human man, we're talking about a guy who would kill him with his bare hands if he wanted to. And I don't mean figuratively like, yo, I would kill you in a fight. I mean, I would kill you in a fight if he chose to, but Machine Gun Kelly's brain 
just doesn't operate on that wavelength. He just sits there and waits to die, which is what a lot of people do when they're confronted with very scary, very dangerous situations. Let's just break down a quick clip of what happened, but more importantly, I want you to really pay attention to the way that these guys respond to questions about the incident after, and you tell me which reaction and which way of thinking is makes a person healthier and happier in the end. Most of the footage starts here. Connor, I guess that's probably Connor's cane on the ground, and him get ready to throw this drink with his left hand in the most ineffective way possible. Like, Connor, where were you throwing that thing and who are you trying to throw it on? I think he got more on the security than anybody else. And you see a lot of people standing and looking around. This is pretty common. This is how people react when they're confronted with this stuff. This is how like normal people unaccustomed to violence react. Now Connor's pushing his way over there and if you notice the longer it goes and the more attention he's got on him, the more aggressive he gets. It's just a threat display. He wants to assert dominance over you without actually having to fight. That's pretty common, all animals do this. But Machine Gun Kelly is still frozen. He's just standing there. He's not reacting or doing anything. He's just upright, waiting for stuff to happen. And some other woman that's not Megan Kelly is holding on to him. I don't know what that is. These ladies come to the, Megan's rescue. They're the only people with a smart reaction. They come get her and then get her out of there. They rescued Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. Now we've got security just woke up and he's like, oh, I need to be doing something. I'll tell people to back up. And then these little girls are laughing. And that's why this is important, because you might be thinking that, you know, this is just Hollywood stuff, they're not really going to do anything, but people act like this when it's not rich, famous celebrities that aren't really going to start shooting. And now you look, Machine Gun Kelly is still shut down, and he does something that's pretty common when people are under stress. He's still trying to get that computer running, he still doesn't know how he feels about this. Megan Fox has people fixing her clothes for you, which shows you the reality they live in. And watch, watch what Machine Gun Kelly does here. When he finally gets his stuff together, he does, uh, a f he feigns a laugh. Like, oh, <laughs> this is totally funny. Even though he's definitely not comfortable with this conflict. But this is the most telling part. He's laughing and he's having a good time. That's how Connor reacts even after it's all cooled down. But now look at Machine Gun Kelly's reaction. When he was asked the exact same question about the exact same set of circumstances that he just went through as well. Someone just told me you had a little scuffle with Connor McGregor on the carpet. What happened? So that's what I mean when I say that his reaction to this thing was like pathetic. Like he's so feeble minded. He's asked a softball question. It's not even like the reporter was hitting him hard with it. And he just couldn't come up with an answer. So he makes a little childish noise and hits the microphone out of the reporter's hands. That's pathetic. That's like loser behavior. Like you got punked in the real physical confrontation. So you're just gonna do this to a reporter because you know that he's not gonna do anything back to you. 